in the previous two videos, I've shown two ways that you can use the median setting in Photoshop. We've looked at using it to quickly remove noise and remove people and things from our pictures. Now, if you've liked that, you'll think that this next technique is magic. Now, ever since I started getting out with my camera taking pictures of the landscape and down on the coast, I've very quickly become addicted to long exposure photography. I just love the feeling you can give to a scene by increasing the time that the shutter remains open. You can create something that gives a soft, dreamy feel by smoothing out water, but then you can also add drama to an image by stretching out the clouds. To do this, we generally use a neutral density filter. Now, if you don't know what one of these is, it's basically a darkened piece of glass that goes over the front of your camera and so forces us to use a longer shutter speed to allow more light onto the camera's sensor. Doing this smooths out and blurs anything that's moving. The longer the shutter speed, the more blur we get. But what if you're out and about with your camera and you don't have your neutral density filters with you? Well, here's a great way that we can fake it. Now this technique all starts with the photographs and there's the key thing, we need to take more than one photograph. Now when you're at the location with your camera on a tripod, we need to get a perfect exposure, but do so with the slowest possible shutter speed. So in this example, I set my ISO to 100 and the aperture to f16. This would mean I needed a slower shutter speed to expose the picture correctly. The slowest I could get and still keeping the picture perfectly exposed is 1 13th of a second and you can see that here. Now this means for a 1 second exposure, I would need to take 13 photographs. For a 2 second exposure, I would need to take 26 photographs. If the slowest I could set my shutter speed was 1 20th of a second, this would mean that a 1 second exposure, I would need to take 20 photographs a 2 second, 40 photographs, and so on. A 30 second exposure would be a whopping 600 photographs, which can be done, but it would mean your computer working a lot harder. But getting back to what I had, which was 1 13th of a second. To take these photographs, rather than me pressing the shutter 13 times, I can use the inbuilt intervalometer and set that to do it for me. This prevents me from knocking the camera each time and causing movement. Now here in Bridge are all 13 of the photographs that I took and I'm going to use to create that one second long exposure image. You can see the settings that I used down here and as I click through them, you can see how each one is different. Now we need to get all of these images into Photoshop, but do it in such a way that they don't open as individual images, but open one above the other in the layer stack. Now there's a number of ways we can do that depending on whether you're using Lightroom or maybe even using Bridge. So let's take a look at those now. First of all, as a photographer, I tend to use Lightroom a lot in my workflow. So what I would do there is go to where my images are, highlight all of the images that are being used for the one second long exposure, then go to the photo menu, choose edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. Now if you're a Bridge user, this is how you do it. Here we can see all 13 images in Bridge. So with the first image uh, highlighted, I'll then hold down the Shift key and click on the final image so they're now all highlighted. Then go to the Tools menu at the top of the screen, then Photoshop and load files into Photoshop layers. That will then do exactly the same thing, opening each image up on top of each other in the layer stack. Now, regardless of how you do go about getting all of the images into Photoshop, one on top of the other, the actual technique for creating this fake long exposure is incredibly easy. All we need to do is click on the image at the very, very top of the layer stack and then scroll down to the very beginning and hold down the shift key and click on the first image so that they're now all highlighted. Once that's done, we'll then go to the layer menu, choose smart objects and convert to smart object. We could also just come to the fly out menu in the top right hand corner of the layers panel and choose convert to smart object. Once we have the smart object, we then just go back to that layer menu, smart objects, stack mode, and the magic happens with this one here, median. Now I'm just gonna click on that. 
Photoshop now does a little bit of processing, but very soon afterwards you'll notice you've then created your long exposure. So there we go, if we zoom in, we can see now we've got that foggy, misty kind of look to the water. So this is before, we can see, even though it was 1 13th of a second, we are getting a little bit of kind of softness there, but we can see all this area here of the water isn't completely flat. But if we go back to what we've just created, so there's before, after, before, and after. Now it's such a great technique to fall back on if you want to create a long exposure but didn't have a neutral density filter with you at the time you were taking the photographs. Now in this example here I created a one second exposure using 13 images but I could have quite easily maybe chosen six or seven images and created a half second exposure. It's just that having more images gives you more choices. But let's take a look now at an even longer long exposure. Now this boat here was anchored up in an area called Instow in North Devon, just a short drive from my home. With the lighting conditions as they were, the slowest I could set my shutter speed and still maintain a perfect exposure was 1 20th of a second. So for a 1 second exposure I would need 20 photographs. Now the sea was already quite calm so I wanted a 5 second exposure to smooth it out even more and create a soft, calming feel to the picture. So for a five second exposure, this worked out as needing 100 photographs. At 1 20th of a second, I need 20 for one second, so five seconds would be 20 times five, which is 100. Now before dialing those settings in, I actually took a picture of the boat at a much faster shutter speed because it wasn't resting on the sand, there was water around it just enough to make it move a little bit. And you'll see why I took that extra picture in a short while. Here though is the camera now taking the 100 photographs at 1 20th of a second. And here are all 100 images in bridge. Now depending on how powerful your computer is, you might actually find it better to process a few images at a time rather than getting your computer to do them all in one go. That's a lot of processing you're asking it to do there. So in my example, I took 100 images. I'm going to split that and I'm going to process the first 50, then the second 50, and then I'll show you how you can combine them all together. So we're going to click on the very first image and the way they're numbered, I can scroll down now to the 50th image, which is going to be this one just here. I'll hold down the shift key, click on that. So the first 50 are now highlighted. I'll go to the tools menu, Photoshop and load files into Photoshop layers. So with all those layers now open up in Photoshop, we can see them one above the other in the layer stack and the uppermost layer is highlighted. So I'll scroll down to the very start, hold down the shift key and click on the first image so they're all highlighted. We'll then convert this to a smart object by going to the fly out menu in the top right of the layers panel and choosing convert to smart object. And then we'll go to the layer menu, smart objects, stack mode and median. Now that then creates the long exposure by just using 50 of the 100 images. Now we don't need to keep this as a smart object now, we don't need to access all the layers that made it up. So I'm just gonna right click on that layer there and choose rasterize. Now let's go back over to bridge and we'll choose the remaining 50 images. So I'll click on the first one, scroll all the way down to the last image and hold the shift key down, click on it so they're all highlighted, go to the tools menu, choose Photoshop, load files into Photoshop layers. And again, with all those images now open up in Photoshop, one above the other in the layer stack, the top layer is highlighted. I scroll down to the very first layer Hold the shift key down and click so they're now all highlighted. Convert that to a smart object and go to the layer menu, choose smart objects and stack mode and median. That creates the long exposure and again we don't need to keep this as a smart object so I'll just right click and choose rasterize layer. So now we have two individual long exposure images but each one is made up of 50 images. 100 images was going to give me a five second exposure, so 50 images will give me a two and a half second exposure. So what I'll now do with the move tool selected is click on one of the images, drag it up to the tab of the other image, bring it in, hold the shift key down and then release. So it places it directly on top. We now see these two layers in the layer stack. I need to make sure that both of these now are highlighted and I'm going to convert this to a smart object. 
Once that happens, I can then go to the layer menu, choose Smart Objects, Stack Mode, and Median. So now I can turn the two and a half second exposure images into one long five second exposure. So we can go before and after, before and after. Now you'll remember that I actually said about taking an extra picture of the boat, but at a much faster shutter speed. And that's because it wasn't resting on the sand, there was a little bit of movement. This is why I did that. So I'll go to File, then Place Embedded, and I'll navigate to where I have that razor sharp picture of the boat. There it is on my desktop and click Place. And that's gonna put it directly on top of my long exposure image. So we can just press Enter or Return to commit that. Then all I'll do is just add a layer mask to that image, a white layer mask, get a brush, and I will use a black foreground color. So then I can hide parts of this sharp image to reveal the long exposure below. And I'll just do that very quickly on the water here so we can see now that we've got an image made up of this really smooth, soft water, but a razor sharp picture of the boat. And I'll just need to reduce the size of my brush as I get nearer to the boat itself. But the final image that I created is this one here, a five second exposure with no neutral density filter. That is just so cool. So there you go, that's three videos now covering just some of the things that you can do with that incredible median stack mode. If you've liked it, give us a thumbs up and if you haven't already, click on subscribe. But for now, that's me, I'm done. I'll see you in the next video.